and yo yo guys welcome back this time with the outer worlds I did not expect you back so soon, Captain. We're now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. The Charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above?
Ah, the charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? Hello again, dearie. What can I get you? She works over at the fishery next door. Quite the hard worker, but she's got a bit of a temper. No disagreement there, dearie. But Velma can be a little prickly. Oh, but here I go again, running my mouth when it's none of my business. Was there something else you needed? What can Auntie Abigail do for you? Velma seem out of sorts to you. He's always cranky. Ah, the charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it here. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer.
Captain, let's talk. Good old Stellar Bay. Only place on the planet that don't stink of sulfur. On account of it stinking like fish instead. Here they come! The caves back east are safest. We can head up this path if you want to shoot your way through a few nightmares on your way up. I love this mountain. You can see so much from here. So many beasts would need killing, so many drinks would need drinking.
And here we are. Told you we'd make it in one piece. Station ain't too far now. Hey, you! Get over here! There are marauders up ahead! Hiram's home. <laughs> Just kidding. Guy never sets foot outside. not realize this being as you're an outsider, but the blaring alarms indicate this. Here's the elevator, but it ain't gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. Guess we keep moving. forward. Look for another way up. Can we talk?
out there. Whoever you are, yes, yes, I can see you. Come here and talk to me. Face the intercom. I can't tell if you're brave or simply touched in the head. What in the galaxy are you doing sniffing around my station? Unless you are, in fact, trying to suicide by Marauder? And you, Nioka, what are you doing lugging a stranger into my station? You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, he hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. No, no, no. We'll deal with information-related business later. As I said, there are bigger problems threatening my life and livelihood at this very moment. The Marauders want me dead. And since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I need you to clear out the threat. As my newest contractor, you may call me... The Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of The Broker being a dumbass alternative. Aside from you. See, Nioka? I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. of them, I think. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here?
That is the primary goal behind locking myself high in a tower. Some folks don't look kindly on me being a purveyor of delicate information. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. Caring or not won't change the facts of the matter. I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Exactly what I was thinking. They hurt us all with their pettiness. Which, of course, has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. My former partner, Sanjar, transmits from his office in MSI's headquarters in the center of town. Don't let him try to fool you. While his messages might seem like gibberish, they are in reality coded business orders to off-world companies. I understand why he needs the bandwidth, but we had a deal and he's broadcasting ceaselessly. No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Graham and Sanjar to stop transmitting on their end. You do that, I'll be here waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it. Plus a vat of patience. Sure, you know where to find me if you need me. <laughs> 